The Jay Young Show is a weekly podcast featuring insightful discussions with anyone from big business CEOs, celebrities, to military heroes. Each interview is a personal conversation about business, life, and anything in between. And now, your host, Jay Young. Hello, everybody. Jay Young here on The Jay Young Show. Thank you for coming today. We are going to have a great show with you. I've got a, a, a new guy that I just met up in Detroit, Michigan. And we're going to know, we want to know all about Detroit, what's going on there. We want to know why this guy is successful. He's, I'm very fortunate to have him on the, on the air today. And first, we want to talk about, um, you know, some things in the only gas business right now. We have the Anadarko sale. And Anadarko, you know, was selling to Chevron last week. And then all of a sudden, Oxy came in, made a larger bid for them. Then Warren Buffett comes in. He wants to make a, some money, so he invests a lot of about $10 billion into Occidental Petroleum. So we're seeing that in the markets today. We're really excited about that. We're really excited about what's going on in the oil and gas business. But we also want to know about the stock portfolios and how you diversify your portfolios. And we also want to know how did Mr. Liddell become successful? Because that's a lot of my listeners want to know hey, what does it take to be successful? What path do I need to go on? to be successful. So with that, Ellis Liddell, thank you for coming on the show today. Appreciate you coming here and, and uh, you know, sharing your story with us. All right. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me and let's help everybody to learn more about money. There you go. I like that. I like that. You know, he has ELE advisors and also ELE wealth advisors. He's an RIA and also a broker dealer in Detroit. So before we go into Detroit, one of the best places ever is to go to a baseball game in Detroit. I've done it, been there. It's an incredible place to go and watch baseball. Before we go there, let's talk about let's talk about you. Kind of where did you grow up, and tell us a little bit about about yourself. I grew up in Mississippi, uh, not too far from the Dallas area, uh, Utica, Mississippi, a very small town. As a matter of fact, we always say we were not poor; we was po because we couldn't afford no <laughs> ark. <laughs> As Zig Ziglar would say, they had a mirror in the in the town, so it'd make it look bigger, right? So make make the town hey, look right. bigger. There you go. I like that. We literally had stoplights, you know. I'm talking small, and I'm glad we had the one stoplight. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do when I got to the big city. <laughs> there you go. That's great. That's great. So you grew up went to high school there, and after high, high school, school went to Mississippi College. It's a, a liberal arts school. It's a Christian based college in Clinton, Mississippi. Wow. Clinton, Mississippi. Yeah. Great. Okay. Clinton, Mississippi. I actually ran track for Mississippi College, so I actually got a track scholarship. Did you? And got to train with a couple Olympians actually who were on the team. And uh when you get when you when your high I'm sorry, when your college freshman roommate is traveling to Germany and overseas and everywhere as a freshman, it makes you desire to travel as well. Wow. So I can say I've traveled the world several times. Uh, every place been Antarctica in 2020, I'll go to Antarctica. But I've been to the traditional places that everybody goes, Europe, Athens, Greece, you know, all those places. Uh, but again, the goal setting started in Mississippi, in Utica, Mississippi, in my high school, when I decided that I had to figure out how to get out of that small town. Wow. And I remember going to my grandma's house, and I saw a plaque on the wall that says, you can't get rich in a small town, too many people watch it. <laughs> That's great. What was your event and track? Hurdles. Hurdles, okay. Yep, hurdles. The short yep, hurdles or the... A, the... I was did both, but I was better at the long hurdles, the 400-meter hurdles. Okay. okay. Well, that's a hard race. Yep. Yeah, and I went to nationals in that 400-meter hurdles. So it, it, it was a hard race, but it made me a better man. Well, man. I'm talking about the goals, goal setting and practice and determination. That, that takes a lot right. to run the 400. I'll tell you what, that is a, that's a hard race. So that takes a lot of goals. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Thanks. So after you did that, where where'd you go from there? I I eventually got married a couple times. Uh, not the perfect life. Got married a couple times and moved to Dallas. Believe it or not, there you and go. That's where I found I found success in Dallas, uh, working for a financial firm there in Dallas. Uh, it was Thomas and Associates. That firm's closed now, but I learned so much about the basics of goal setting. And I recall uh, the guy I worked for, Mr. Thomas. He had a yellow pad on his desk, and he said, if you want to make money, you got to figure out how you make money. What's your value? What are you worth? 
So he he took my goal setting to a whole nother level because he had me break things down to per second, per minute, per hour. And he told me that he wasn't going to hire me an assistant until I made over $250,000 on my own because I needed to know the process that it takes to make money. Wow. And I, I, I appreciate him doing that because when I walked past my secretary's desk and, and she's just kind of moving paper from one side to the other, I realized she's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so, so had he not done that, I wouldn't know that. So, you know, I think that throughout our life, we have people who come along who point you in the right direction. I call those angels on your shoulder. And if you listen to them, oftentimes and implement what they tell you, it will make you better. That's the reason why, as a financial coach for other people, it's much easier for me to coach because I've been coached. Yes, absolutely. You've been coached a lot. I mean, from your track, your track to also your um, to your guy. What was the guy's name that was your mentor, if you will, at, at Thomas and Associates? Yeah. Dexter Thomas. Dexter Thomas. Dexter Thomas. Okay, great. So that's that's great. I mean, that's that instills in you in the very beginning because I always tell you know college students, hey, when you get out of college, you know, don't go to work for one guy because it's kind of hard to for him to mentor you, but go to work for a bigger firm that you can get involved in and find out, hey, what does it what does it take to make money? You know, so you, but you know what? And that, that, it's interesting you say that because you've got to get trained. And if you can get with a firm that actually has a training program, that's so much better because you're learning at someone else's expense. They've already made the mistakes, and now they teach you best practice. Right. Absolutely. Well, that's great. That's great. So how long were you in Dallas? Six years. Six years? Six okay. years in Dallas. And I moved to Detroit. It's the big city of Detroit. Wow. What year did you move that's to Detroit? Melody. I moved to Detroit in 96. 96, okay. Because I know that boy, Detroit went through a really bad time. About 10 years later, I guess, it was uh, the financial depression really, really hit that, that town hard. Yeah, so Detroit, you, you'd already. It, and Detroit had, listen, it has made a major comeback. And as you stated earlier, one of the prettiest stadiums in baseball is Tiger Stadium, Comerica Park here in Detroit. Uh, and Detroit, the whole downtown has come back. It's just, it's kind of amazing. Uh, Quicken Loans owner, uh, Dan Gilbert, uh, who also owns the Cleveland Cavalier, uh, he made a decision to put a lot of money into Detroit. And he got other people around the country, including Warren Buffett, to come here and look at Detroit and figure out how do we help this town not fall off the map. Wow. And they've done a phenomenal job. That's great. So he brought a lot of businesses there because it was mostly autom yeah, automobile. Business. Yes, it's, it's definitely still automotive. But you know the beauty of, of the automotive industry? You could get out of high school here and choose whether you want to go to college or go to work for the factory. You're going to make just as much money as the person who chooses to go to college. It's one of the few cities that that's true for. But I've got clients who come in and retire with a million dollars that they saved working for automotive over 30 years. Then I've got college professors who come in with $250,000 they saved working for a collegiate. And this is PhD level. Wow. So it's a great city. It just kind of shows why manufacturing is so important to America. Absolutely. I know that, that um, you know, Trump's always talked about, you know, made in the USA, let's let's bring factories back here. And I know Ford just made a big decision to to come back and, and uh, you know, manufacture things in the United States. And I don't think it was in Detroit specifically, but it was back in the United right. States. And that does bring a lot of jobs, which brings a lot of trickle-down economics for the whole town that at their end, which is which is great, great news. Okay, good. So, how long have you had ELE Advisors and and the the broker dealer? Okay, uh, I got ELE uh, RIA side ELE Advisory Services. Uh, it's coming up on twenty years old this year. Wow. Uh, the broker dealer we purchased about uh, seven years ago. We purchased a broker dealer. Okay, okay. So, what's your specialty, or what do you what do you really like to push or talk about with your your people? Because so, so, if I have money, what I do is I I'm calling different advisors. I'm talking to them about what do I invest in, and and if somebody came in and said I got a million bucks, what would you what would you what would you ask questions, or what would you how, how would you get them to put their account with you? What's okay. your specialty? So, what, after, yeah, after we got past the fact that they've got a million bucks, and how did you get that million dollars? You inherit it. Uh, you know, where did it come from? I saved it. Oh, great. Then you already have budget down pat. So financial literacy is, is at the root of everything that we do is to make sure that the client understands 
Now, once we get beyond that, I'll ask them about their risk tolerance. Uh, are you a risk taker or not? If they're, if they're willing to take some risk, I help them, help them understand the stock market. And the fact that the equities market is, the, is probably the greatest market if you go back and just do a 100 year period and track it, that average of 8% return, it, it, it's, it's, it's very huge in a way of making money. So once we get past that, I'll talk about some of the stocks that I really like. And, and I'm not recommending any of these stocks. These are stocks that we've researched here at ELE Wealth Management. Those stocks might be Facebook, Apple, uh, Exact Science, Square, Ferrari. I like race, Ferrari. Uh, they can't call it quite a, a car stock. It's also a race stock, so it's kind of in the middle. It's a great hybrid. The Exact Science. Millennials are being asked to take a colonoscopy. Well, for many of them, it's to take a day off of work. Wouldn't you rather do a stool sample, send it in, and tell you whether you have a DNA composition that can cause you to have colon cancer down the road? So I see Exact Science as a company that has nothing but growth potential, nothing but upside. But again, before you buy anything, research it or give an advisor who's already researched. But we really like the stocks portfolio for our, for our clients. Right. So you, you buy individual stocks for your clients? Correct. I buy individual stocks. And I buy those individual stocks based on what I think that potential is. A few years ago, we bought Weight Watchers. Uh, we bought Weight Watchers for $19. It we went all the way to 105 Then Weight Watchers came down. We got out of Weight Watchers and moved on to what we thought might be the next stock, which was Square, and rose Square up. Square is also associated with Cash App, for those who are wondering, what's Square? Okay. Okay, good. Good, good. So how you're on a lot of different radio programs. You've been on the on television and radio in Dallas. You're on a lot of different things in, in Detroit. Why do people call you? What What's the big – I mean, I, I like you as a person. You seem like a really nice man. I'd love to have dinner <laughs> with you. What, what what do people – but them? I'm sure they want to know more about – because these, these are investment programs that call you. Why would they – why do they call you? Well, like many advisors, one of the things that nobody wants to admit is we don't have to be brilliant to pick great stocks, but it does help. So for the most part – I get calls because of our performance. We, we've done very well with our performance. and But I think a lot of advisors can tout that. I think the thing that separates us from the rest of the group is the fact that we want to educate our customer. We want to educate a customer sitting in a room with us. So we use seminars, uh, ones to talk to clients to make sure that there's a basic understanding of why we did what we did. And the other thing is I use cash as an option. A lot of firms won't let you go to cash. But we believe in going to cash. Uh, in October, when the market was going down, uh, we, we allowed our clients to go to cash. Uh, so many of those clients didn't go through the pain of October, November, December of 18. And then in January, we called them up and said, hey, is this a good time to put you back in the market? Because we explained early that cash is an option. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And these programs, when they call you, what kind of questions do they ask you? What's Is there a favorite question that they ask you that... That, that you like answering? Well, I think the biggest thing that, that I'm asked from time to time is how did you go from where you where you were to where you are today? Uh, I wasn't exaggerating when I said I grew up in Mississippi and we were poor. I started reading books, and that's why financial literacy is so important. I started reading books about money a long time ago, and I continued to educate myself. I'm the oldest of 13 kids. Wow. And being the oldest, of, yes, being the oldest of thirteen <laughs> kids, you know, when I went to college, I had to get a scholarship. That wasn't optional. <laughs> so I, I remember. I'll tell you this, Jay. I went out for track and field uh, in the eleventh grade. My coach looked at me and said, uh, "What's your name, son?" I said, "Coach uh, Liddell." He said, "In the history of this school, there's never been a Liddell athlete." So I'm not going to allow you to come out. So he had me train with the girls that year. And wouldn't let me come out with the boys. Well, so that means I didn't get to go to any practice. But my senior year, that summer of my senior year, I worked hard on my own at the track, jumping over hurdles. I read a book about how to hurdle. I taught myself how to hurdle. And I was the first scholarship athlete at my college in 30 years. Wow. That's awesome. So it, it, it tells you that. Yeah, Edward Moses and I ran against each other. We were in the same event, the 400 meter hurdles. Oh, my goodness. And of course, wow. he, already, he already had his spot. So the rest of us was trying to get a slot. Yeah. 
But he had his, his ticket was already punched to the Olympics. Edward Moses was a phenomenal athlete. Oh, he was. He definitely was. And that's great that you ran against him. That, I I can now say that I know somebody that ran against him because he's one of my one of my. I always read. I looked up to him. He was awesome. Hey, so what kind of books yeah, did you read? Great, I'm sorry. He's a great guy. On top of that, he's a great individual. He runs a a, a nonprofit organization that helps fund kids all around the world. So he's a great individual. Yeah. I was at a, right, back to question about what I, I was I was at a, I was at an event one time in uh, let me see where was it it was in uh, Charleston South Carolina and I was at there and I met Edwin Moses was there and he walked up and I knew exactly who he was and um, I nobody around me knew who he was or what he did or whatever and, and wow. I was like no this is Edwin Moses you don't understand I mean this guy's this guy's <laughs> unbelievable I mean he's he's Edwin yeah, Moses one hundred and seven races undefeated right oh yeah oh yeah one hundred and seven races undefeated. That's, I mean, a record that hadn't been come close to being touched. Right. Jay, you asked the question, what books I read? I, you know, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind is one of my favorites, and that's Joseph Murphy. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, where he really talks about having goals and tying into a consciousness that exists that pulls everything together. If I had to say what was my greatest success, it's my my ability to be open to learning new technology, new techniques. Um, we were impressed when we were watching you set up for the show and, and the technology you have in that studio there. Um, it, it just, I'm open to learning and I will never stop being a student of the universe. That's great. Uh, and I tell you, somebody that says that they don't know it all, I mean, I know that Warren Buffett and, and talked about with Charlie, you know, about the, the oxy buy and, they, and Warren said, I don't know everything about oil and gas. That's why Charlie's Munger's here, and he's doing the oxy deal. And and Charlie said, "I love it." You know, at the Berkshire Hathaway conference, and and uh, but Warren said, "I need to learn more about it." I mean, even Warren Buffett, eighty-eight years old, here he is going, "I, I need to learn more about this." You know, so that's great that because a lot of people, especially young kids, they think they know it all, and they think that that it's their way, and that's it. Period. I was that way when I got out of college. And that is not the right way to go. You know, it takes you longer at that point to decide, hey, you know what? I need some help. I need to learn. And it, it, there's five years of my life after college that I took that I didn't listen to everybody else, you know, because I was waiting to, to you know, do it myself. And I thought I was the college expert, you know, and I knew what to do, and I didn't, you know. So that's, that's a great point that you, bring, that you bring up. That's great. That's great. Okay, so – um, let's talk about wealth advisors. So you started the, the wealth advisors, and right now, if somebody wants to, is it just a website? Can you go on ELE Wealth Advisors and and, and go yeah, on your exactly. website? What what would they expect? Yeah, go to elewealth.com. E-L-E wealth dot com. dot com. And, dot com. Okay, what would they and see there? To see, they're going to see who we are, uh, seminars, things that are coming up. Uh, some recommendation for some education tools. They're going to see things that help make them better investors. Okay. That's great. That's great. Do you do anything else besides the stock market or is it just the stock market or do you do any outside? Do you do real estate or oil and gas or anything else? Is there anything else that you have on your platform? We've actually done your favorite, which is oil and gas. Yes. We, we invested, invested in oil and gas over the years, uh, real estate as well. So, uh, a lot of the real estate, Right now, the equities are so hot. That's part where well, most of our money is invested is equities. But we have definitely done real estate, you uh, trust different things over the years, as well as oil and gas partnerships. Okay, okay. I wasn't trying to do a commercial for myself, but hey, if, if you'll allow me to here, <laughs> <laughs> there's two different ways to invest in oil and gas. There's the traditional, old-fashioned way, and then there's this new product that we have that now that is just phenomenal, and it's the only way to invest in oil and gas. It's, we have to raise a lot of money to do it, but hey, if you're buying an asset, like our first asset, we put in $37 million, we're over $200 million in proved reserves, our clients are real happy. That's what we're happy about, is our clients are happy. We want them to become extremely rich because we back in after payout, so we want them to make a lot of money because that means that we're going to make more money on the back end and all our employees and engineers and geologists and landmen and all the other people that it takes because it's... It's an effort. It takes a lot to do it. So, uh, thank you out there for the plug-in for me. I mean, I so I get a plug-in. Thank you very much. 
I, I know you're that kind of guy, Ellis. I, I could see that. I could see that in you. So your your family, you have a, a wife and kids? Yes, yes. I have I have a wife uh, and uh, three, uh, four kids. Four well, kids. If I count the help, there's two marriages. I brought a few extra kids to the table. So I, I always say I fathered three, but I raised six. There you go. There you go. You're not going to 13 like you um, – like you had nah. no, no. <laughs> God, it's a lot of kids, man. Yeah. I tell you what, wow, yeah. Yeah. that's great, that's great. All right, Ellis, let's talk about for a second. Let's talk about your parenting and what you what you recommend about parenting or something. Is there anything burning desire that you have right now to talk about with your kids? Yeah, I, I think that most parents don't prepare their kids by teaching them budgeting. Uh, the purpose of an allowance is not. So the kids can, can can just have extra money. The purpose of an allowance is to teach children budgeting skills. So, for example, everybody listening to this show should ask themselves this one question. How much does it cost for you to be you? Because once you understand how much it costs for you to be you, then you know how much you need from a budget perspective. Well, your kids don't know how much it costs for them to be themselves yet. So let's just say your budget for a child is $50 a week or $100 a week. What are they going to pay out of that budget? They should pay. It should be the budget should cover their phone bill because most kids have a phone, smartphone at this point. Uh, there's some data that's associated with that. If there's an overage, then what? Most kids, 13 and over, are definitely going to movies uh, and, and and going out to eat. So if you teach your kids how to budget while they're in your household, they won't have to come home to the bank of mommy when they're out of your household. If they live down the street, they won't have to come over to your house once a week to get groceries because they ran out of groceries at their house and the paycheck's not here yet. Right. So if you don't teach them the purpose of budgeting by teaching them through your through their allowance, they'll never know what it means to run out of money and how do they overcome it. So you rather they overcome it at your house than to get out on their own and have to always have their hands out saying, Mama, I need, Daddy, I need. Right. That's great. I like that a lot because – I mean, no, are you are you doing something to make the money, but you're also budgeting the money. And even if they don't have a, even if they're making good grades in school or something, there's a budget that they can have that they can think about money. Because that's one thing high school, college doesn't do really is teach you about money. Right. How, how do right. I make you money? How do I set goals it. and and all that? Which you're real real good about setting goals. So that's that is that's incredible. That's that's really good. So what's in the future of of you where where do you where do you think you'll be in five years? You know we're gonna we're working on financial literacy this summer. We're gonna have uh, twelve college interns coming in high school college, and we're gonna work on financial literacy programming uh, material that you can go to a thousand words that you should know, and we're doing that through our organization called ELE Cares Foundation, which is really to help bring financial literacy to the public. Second thing, working on books. Uh, writing another book. I have a book out called Wealth Management, Merging Faith with Finance, working on the second book and the third book. But those books are something that people can download, listen to, because that's kind of the hot thing now is everybody's listening to books. So audio books is a big thing. So we're working on an audio program to teach people, working on a, a puzzle that you can learn while playing games and, and still encouraging people to play Monopoly and do the cash flow game, but learn about money. Make yourself available to take some time each day to learn something new as a financial term. Like, for example, FRA, full retirement age for Social Security, IRA, individual retirement account. So start learning more about money and, and you'll just see that you can create it and hold on to it a lot longer the more you know about it. And then also, if you're out there buying a car, make sure that if you want to buy a new car, you can afford a new car. You may should get a gently used car, two years old. Those the car values drop almost 50% when they're two years old. So consider buying a, for some people, they have two or three cars. You don't even, you'll be able to buy a two-year-old car with less than 16,000 miles on it. So just make sure that you're making wise decisions, smart decisions that flow into your overall goal plan for your life. That's great. That's great. And to come see you early, and even if they're making thirty to forty, fifty thousand dollars a year early in life, they come to you and say, "I want to open them an account because I want to start buying stocks." So, anything that they can do at these early ages is better for them because they'll have money set aside. If it's ten percent, twenty percent, I mean, if you're making fifty thousand or out of college, making fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year, or seventy-five or whatever the college, I didn't make that much. I know I made about fifteen, twenty thousand. Right, we didn't make that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Back to that. Yeah, exactly. Now, let me just say this here. 
Yeah, there's a saying, if you're willing to do what others are unwilling to do, you'll be able to live like others are unable to. So I repeat that. If you're willing to do what others are unwilling to do, you will be able to do what others are unable to do. So the new car, there's going to be a day when you can buy as many new cars as you want. But that might not be how you start your career out. You may want to buy a gently used car to get you back and forth. It's going to reduce your insurance costs. And it probably is going to be efficient in gas still because most of the gas guzzles are gone. So just make sure that every decision you make needs to be, if, you don't, if you're not great at it, then get a coach. The best advice I can give you is to get somebody to coach you and have a shoulder that you can lean on when you're making big financial decisions. That's great. And that's, that's you starting your mentoring program there at ELE. So that's awesome. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I've also got another good friend in, in Detroit, Peter Mothy. And Peter's a great friend of mine. He's mentoring. He has 24 uh, people he's going to bring. And I'm not sure if they're all men or boys or, or there are 24 right. people he's mentored over, the, over his life. He's bringing them to Dallas next year. And he wants me to put on a program for them, me and several other people. The people that he's brought up from the, you know, from early age, just to help them with things like that, because there's a lot of big decisions that somebody has to make, not only financial but you know social and emotional and a lot of things that people go through. So that's great starting in the financial world because it does take money in this world. I mean, it does take money. You got to pay rent. I, my Uber driver yesterday in Denver was in an apartment three years ago. It was seven hundred dollars a month. Today it's twelve hundred dollars a month wow in denver it's gone up same apartment it's gone up that much this marijuana right. deal i guess just is you know skyrocketed <laughs> the denver economy but it it is for real and so people do need money and learning about it at an early age is something that hey i applaud you for that's great that's great all right well let me ask you a couple of questions um kim always wants me to ask these questions and i'm i've got a few of them so your favorite vacation is it beach or mountains? Beach. The beach. <laughs> beach. Any particular beach in mind that you have right now besides in Mississippi? <laughs> you know what? I, I actually like to get away and feel like I'm away. So Bermuda would be my favorite beach to go to right now. Oh, great. Bermuda. I'm, my brother loves North Bermuda. Carolina. Yeah, so it's not a long flight, but it's just great. Yeah. Storm, dark and storm. One of my favorite little beach drinks. How about that? There you go. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. And also, too, the Gulf Shore, Mississippi, they had the beach volleyball. What a beautiful beach that was. Man, that was, I watched the finals and all that for the last couple of days, college finals in, uh, this weekend, and it was, it's, it's a great seat. So I, I can see why you, why you like the beach. That's great. So did, actually, you, actually I, growing up in Mississippi, we used to go to Gulfport, Biloxi, uh, to, to, to hang out on that beach, and it's a beautiful beach. In yeah. spite of the hurricanes that come through, they always – put that beach back together because people love to come to that white sand beaches. Yeah, it was nice. I mean, really nice. And and I, I didn't know where they were at first. And I just watched, turned on the program, and there was all these beaches. I'm like, man, where is this? You know, and, and it was in Mississippi. I've never been there. So, I mean, a place where I'd, I'd love to go. So, that's great. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it. So, do you do, you do a lot of text messaging now, or is it more phone calls? I, you know what? I'm still old school, so I'd rather do a phone conference. Yeah, uh, we seldom text, but we, we we just signed up for an app that lets us notify clients through texting. Uh, so we, we're still now. I've got uh, seven assistants here in the office with me, so we can actually be more hands-on than the average financial advisor. Uh, so because of that, we still call people for their birthdays and wish them happy birthday because it's kind of shameless to tell everybody it's my birthday today. Wish me happy birthday. <laughs> so we make sure that we let you your special day. That somebody's thinking about you. Oh, that's so right. that phone touch, yeah, that phone touch for us is still very important uh, yeah. way to communicate with our clients. And then we pull the clients together and do client appreciations. Uh, I have client appreciations in Atlanta, Dallas, uh, different cities where we have a group of clients that have moved to. Wow, that's great. That's good. Good for you. Good for you. Well, I tell you what, I've really enjoyed having you. This is Ellis Liddell, E L E Wealth dot com. And you've got a great program, has plenty of assistance to help you out with all your all your needs. And it's been a joy getting to know you. And I look forward to getting to know you more. I want, I want to have you back on the program with an update please, soon please. just to just to get keep in touch. All right. I, I look forward to it. And the next time we talk, we're gonna talk about that whole mentoring. What does it mean? What does it mean to 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 have a mentor and why is that important? 
So we'll talk about that next time you have me on. That'd be great. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being on and, and um, love you, Mom, and, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you.